Przekażę teraz głos kolejnemu prelegentowi. Wystąpi przed Państwem Mirosław Lipszyc, prezes Fundacji Nowoczesna Polska. Zapraszam. So uh, with the advent of uh, new international treaties, uh, the global corporate system is uh, being slowly petrified. And uh, with proliferation of online services, our information sovereignty is now lost uh, on every level. And it's already impossible for almost any country uh, to shape its legal system uh, in the area of the flow of the information freely and independently. So the question arises, who profits from this and why control of information became the central problem of the modern societies. And, uh, and uh, I need to make it clear that I'm either a lawyer or economist, uh, an anthropologist uh, who researches copyright uh, as a system of social norms and analyzes the language of the Polish copyright debate. And uh, just a few words about language. Language, as you probably know, uh, is a normative science system. And thus the language does not reflect reality, it's a tool uh, which we use to comprehend reality. And as such, it may be easily used to influence our decisions by introducing certain words and ideas. Language is the key to people's minds. And in the area of copyright, language is being seriously misused. Uh, words such as pirates and stealing and property are being used more often than ethically neutral terms uh, such as breach of the copyright or uh, intellectual monopoly. Careful wording of copyright debate attaches moral stigma to anyone who discusses the system. So, Due to the ever-increasing importance of copyright, we need to seriously reevaluate and assess our beliefs in this area. And as every system, copyright needs to be questioned. And uh, why was it enacted? What are its goals? Who is supposed to benefit from it? And uh, does it work as designed? So, in the, uh, in, the, in the old times, trade involved uh, transferring things meat and rice and oil and cotton, and, uh, but information is not a thing and uh, does not have a value by itself because the main source of value of things is their scarcity and things which are abundant are free. This is the case with water. If there is plenty of water around, the water is free, but go to place where water is, uh, uh, is scarce and bang. The water is very expensive. So information is never scarce because in the modern times we may copy and proliferate information at zero marginal cost. And uh, to make an information a subject to transactions, well, we need to artificially create scarcity. And uh, this scarcity is called intellectual monopolies. Intellectual monopoly is an artificial state guaranteed privilege. And the basic promise of copyright is that if we grant monopoly to the creator, he will be able to profit from his creative work and the power to allow or deny further uses will give him a constant stream of revenue which will in turn allow him to create more works. And, uh, and it's really interesting because in Poland, the first example of the mechanism of intellectual monopoly was uh, enacted in 18, 1828 uh, by Russia. And the Tsar didn't know where to put this modern invention of intellectual monopoly, so he put it in the place which fit best, which was the censorship law. Uh, and uh, you have probably never heard the term intellectual monopolies, and uh, there is a reason. This is because today, they are no longer called by this name. Uh, we call them intellectual property. And this is because in the neoliberal ideology, property is always good and monopoly is always bad. And this is how we are being influenced 
in our choices and in our decisions. So, of course, of course, uh, 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 of course, information is not property, and uh, because there is no property to sell, and because intellectual monopolies are not meant to transfer things, they are meant to transfer wealth from those without the power to those who hold the power. And if we strip down ideologies built in the past years down to facts, it becomes very clear. Every transaction that involves intellectual monopoly is just an act of exerting the money from the unprivileged to those in power. And uh, World Trade Organization is very active in the field of ensuring that copyright monopolies are maximized and standardized on the global level. Uh, if we strengthen the process of privatization and of information, but making the scope of monopoly wider, uh, we simply generate more tools to exercise monopolistic power on the market and, uh, and uh, the market on the global level, of course. So, so who actually gets the money? So this is the official WTO data uh, of, uh, the, of, the, of the payments of royalties and licenses for the, the for two years, 2010 and 2011. And, if we look, and there, is, there are exporters and if, uh, 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 up and importers down. And if we, if we analyze those numbers, we can clearly see that uh, there are just two countries in the world who actually make a profit on the system. And this is United States and Japan. Japan makes just a little bit of profit. Um, the European Union does not make a profit. The European Union uh, gets less than it spends in, in the international trade in this area. And we, we talk, and we, we talk of course about all the European Union. And if we get into Poland, and I believe our partners from Zaix will confirm that the situation is much, much worse than that. <coughs> so, intellectual monopolies are new tools in which some economists may exercise colonial exploitation. And for the most countries, the promise of the copyright law is that you import nothing, at least nothing of value, and you send the real money. And uh, for most of the world, it's hardly a good deal. And uh, in 2010, the United States export generated more than 100, more than 100 thousands of millions of dollars uh, in royalties and licenses, license fees are long, and the import accounted for only 33 thousands of millions of dollars. That means 75 thousands of millions of dollars. Uh, to USA trade balance, which in most other areas is negative. And uh, that explains why the United States is using their diplomacy and power all over the world to force everyone to adopt a standardized global copyright system. So, it is difficult not to look back and uh, to see history repeating itself. In the end of the 19th century, the biggest proponent uh, of uh, copyright law was France. Because in the end of the 19th century, the French language was the language of the global allies. And uh, the French writers were to benefit most from her convention. And one uh, country which uh, which uh, decided not to participate in Berne's convention was United States, because in that time they relied on the on the on the books uh, from United Kingdom, and it was um, and it was uh, not very fitting uh, to their uh, to their interests to be part of the system. United States became part of the system very late in the in the in the in the eighties. Uh, because at that point they became the net exporter, not net importer. So the story um, does not end um, at Berg Convention and um, uh, WIPO, uh, because when it seemed unlikely that um, World Intellectual Corporation Organization 
uh, could 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 further those in, could, could 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 further those interests. Another approach was tested, and that was approach of signing bilateral or multilateral uh, international treaties. And for the first such a treaty was some uh, 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 trips, the agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. And this treaty has taken away from the countries who signed it the freedom to shape the copyright scope freely. And this is most of the countries. And uh, now what we see is another wave on the international treaties. So uh, it's ACTA, it's TPP, it's SOPA and PIPA and so on and so on and so on. And, uh, and the reason is that international treaties, this is probably the only way to take away our freedom uh, without having the, the, the representatives, elected representatives, uh, 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 having to, to, to having, having discussing it with the people. And uh, so the surprising part may be that I am a pro copyright. I believe in copyright. We do need a copyright. Uh, because we do need mechanisms to benefit the authors and inventors from their works and inventions. We do need to support the creative class, which becomes increasingly something which I, 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 I might call infotaria. And, uh, but the current version of copyright uh, does not benefit those who create. Uh, intellectual monopoly benefits only those who control the market. And those, sadly, are not the authors. Um, and because of the, tra the traditional values of copyright systems, such as balanced rights of users and authors, has been uh, given away uh, a long time ago, and copyright became a global tax of knowledge. Well, we need to discuss it again. And uh, I believe that we need, and this may my report, at least some people here it may, it may come as a surprise. I believe that we need to strengthen the position of creators. Because now creators are the people. We got 46 million creators in Poland alone. So we need to strengthen the position of creators and we need to secure our ability to support creative class. But we do need to make it all happen in a very specific way, in a way which does not give away our freedoms, which does uh, not uh, give us um, to the, uh, which does not alienate the people. And, uh, and what I think may be achieved, and this is something I would like to spend another, another, another couple of years uh, on, is that I think that we can may reach that point and think out the model which will, uh, which will, which will do it best to, uh, to, 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 to achieve those goals. So thank you for coming here, and I'm really happy that there are so many people from different industries and with different points of views. And I'm really happy that uh, while talking here, we may help all this happen. <coughs>